welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. Today, Ryan Rapper said, that's me, we'll be grilling Ian Arbuck on his experience with his Nexus 5X. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO4. Hi, Ian. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? It's going pretty well. I heard you have a new phone. I do. It's, uh, I've had it for about a month now, kind of similar to the timing that we reviewed Android 6.0. Huh, right after, imagine that. After using it for about a month. Uh, it's Honestly, I probably would not have gotten this phone if it weren't for the fact that my Nexus 5 from two years ago, the power button started acting up and uh, would restart itself several times a day. You know, two years for a phone is pretty good. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I don't get that kind of mileage on my phone. No, so. but you... you really like getting new phones i also abuse my phones yeah that's true so, that's true yeah so, so tell me about this new phone you have here yeah so okay so the perspective that i come at this new phone with is a little odd odd yes because the first the, the nexus 5 that i mentioned that i had had for two years is the very first phone that I've ever owned. Right. I'm twenty. Not even just a smartphone, but yeah. the first phone. First phone, yeah. I'm 23 years old, and I, I bought my first phone when I was 21. Kind of pathetic. Uh, before that, I had a couple of, like, 7-inch tablets. Yeah. That I pretended were phones. And sort carried, of. And I carried them around in my front pocket. Yeah. <laughs> and used Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. And when I was living on a college campus, that worked out pretty well. Right. Anyway, uh, so, so the... The things that have informed my preferences for phones are entirely reliant on my experiences with the Nexus 5, mm-hmm. right? So first I'm going to go over the hardware because that's that's the major difference between these two phones, right? Right, of course. So, okay, so the size. When, when I was using the Nexus 5, I decided pretty quickly that it was just about the perfect size for a phone. And that's that. That's still my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I st- I still really really like the five inch screen size because it's it's not too big that you can't reach like the far corners of the screen with right. your thumb. Um, it's it's just out there where it's it's a stretch, but it's you know so it's large enough that you still get as much screen sca- space as possible, mm-hmm. but it's not too big that it's unusable with one hand. And I look at you with your Nexus Six, and I go. Dear Lord, what is that thing? Well, so with the Nexus 6, for example, I can't touch that upper no, left corner. not it's, by a long it's shot. It's just impossible. And one of the problems with Android is that there's a bunch of stuff in that corner mm-hmm. that I can't touch. Luckily, they build in things like the back button at the bottom, so they don't have to do the Apple solution of double tap the or triple I tap or whatever. I think that solution is it's, really good. It looks disgusting. I think it looks really cool. It shows that the operating system can actually do something useful for a change. I, it shows me that it, Apple decided that instead of going with an elegant solution and change the hardware on the phone... How can you change we're going the hardware to, on the phone? We're going you to want change... a bigger screen? Here's your operating system solution. You don't have to use it. Well, okay, but if I don't use it, then I can't reach the... Whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> so... Uh, so the Nexus 5X, um, if we, if we take a look at it, compare it to the Nexus 5, um, I brought both of them over so that, so that you can compare them. Um, I will compare them from I, a distance. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, uh, held You've both of them, them in quite, quite a bit. Yes, okay. exactly. Uh, so the, the Nexus 5X is just a tad larger than the Nexus 5. For the most part, it's just a little bit taller. It's yeah, not, it doesn't look much wider. No, it's not. Um, and that's, so the, the screen is like a fraction of an inch wider mm-hmm. um or larger or whatever right uh but the 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 height difference comes from the fact that they have those those uh front facing speaker grills on the top and bottom of the phone do you like those i do um i it it looks for all the world like you would have stereo front facing speakers right you don't no what only the bottom grill is an actual speaker well that's misleading it's really strange and it's especially strange when you think about the the fact that the top grill is the speaker that it uses when you're on a phone call that's so bizarre yeah Huh. And I don't know why they couldn't make that speaker powerful enough to actually use it for media. Hmm. Um, yeah, kind of strange. So you don't get the stereo, but it's still much, much louder, much clearer, much harder to accidentally cover up that entire speaker grill when you're like watching a YouTube video on and, the phone. And very importantly, they, it also looks symmetrical, which is uh, yeah. very important. That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's so... The phone is still pretty well balanced, you know, even though it became taller, it, it doesn't feel like it's top heavy or anything. Mm-hmm. And speaking of heavy, 
somehow it's lighter than the Nexus Five. It's Not actually, surprising. Like go on, go and pick those up, yeah. and you, it's it is a this. surprising it is difference. Amazing. Now. Not surprisingly, like, my Nexus 6 is like a brick <laughs> compared. Yeah, you could go and break a window with that thing. I have. Oh. Well, that sounds like a story for another time. Mm-hmm. Um, so the button placement, that's another thing that they changed about the hardware of the Nexus 5X. So in the in the original Nexus 5, we had the power button on the right-hand side of the phone and the volume buttons on the left-hand side of the phone. Now we have both of them on the left-hand side of the phone with the volume buttons just below the power button, which is a pretty typical setup for larger phones, Mm -hmm. like five and a half inch, six inch phones, Mm -hmm. which it it makes sense because you can't, not everybody can wrap their hand all the way around the phone to get their fingers to that volume button. Mm -hmm. On a five inch phone, I think it's kind of a silly placement because there are a lot of advantages to having the volume buttons over on the right side. Like... If I have the phone in my pocket and I'm listening to some podcasts, I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to accidentally hit the power button Mm -hmm. while I'm searching for the volume buttons in there. I personally never have this issue. I do the same thing. I put the phone in my pants Mm -hmm. pocket and then I can just mouse through, push through. Mouse through. (laughs) Yeah, I'm using a computer in my pocket. That's how it works. Yep, exactly. And I have no issue with that. Yeah. And I I mean, I haven't haven't discovered a case where pushing the power button accidentally has caused it to like explode well or or have like tap events happening in my pocket or whatever Mm -hmm. um but it's you know it would be nice to know that i'm not accidentally pushing the wrong button Uh, i was just comparing your power button size to my power button size yours is a bit bigger interesting yeah even though the phone is smaller isn't Hmm. that weird um and then the the other reason that i would prefer having the volume buttons over on the left hand side Mm -hmm. is the screenshot really button combination is holding down the power button and the volume down button at the same time. And having the buttons on opposite sides of the phone is perfect because then yeah. you just grip the phone. That's true. And if I want to take a screenshot with them both on the same side of the phone, then I have to like hold it with my left hand. Yeah, that's what I have to do. And push both of those buttons with some combination of fingers on my right hand. It's really strange. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Normal people don't use screenshots, so it's okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless they're using Snapchat and they want to save something because, you know, Snapchat doesn't let you save things. I thought that was the point. Yes, but... I guess I was doing it wrong. It's it's a broken system. I mm. hate Snapchat. Twitter. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, the other thing about the buttons is that I really, really miss the ceramic buttons of the Nexus 5. Yeah. Those things feel really, mm-hmm. really nice. And I, I would actually just spend time... Like rubbing my fingernails across them because it feels so cool when like the the interaction of of whatever my fingernails are made of and whatever pottery the ceramic stuff is made of like they just feel really cool when they rub against each other. <laughs> Fascinating. It, it, it that is not the case with the plastic buttons on the Nexus Five X. Presumably the Nexus Six has metal buttons, but I just don't care. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like it would get cold in the winter. Oh, I love putting my phone in the windowsill. <laughs> nice and chilled. And then you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the opposite of a rice pack that you uh, microwave right. to, to put like next to your pillow at night. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, so that way the uh, Snapdragon uh, 805 gets <laughs> more performant. Nice. Uh, so let's talk about that fingerprint sensor. That is obviously one of the big flagship features of yeah. the Nexus 5X. There it is. Uh, where, where is it placed on the, on the phone? It is in the upper middle. Of the... Back. Yes. They didn't put it on the upper middle of the screen. Or, or, you silly. could also describe it as being adjacent to the S. Right. Yes, the S in the logo of Nexus. Yeah. Yeah. So that that fingerprint sensor, nice and fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, you know, quite often if, you, if you're pulling it out of your pocket and you have your finger on the fingerprint sensor, you're going to already be on whatever screen. You know, it's going to be unlocked and the screen's going to be turned on by the time you get it up to your eye level. Right. Um, I have not had any false positives yet. So it it does appear to be secure. It hasn't mistaken anybody else's fingerprints for mine or any of my fingers that I haven't authenticated. You know, it that's has, good. Yeah, um, it has relatively few false positive or false negatives, mm-hmm. but I don't have any other fingerprint sensors to directly compare it to. You know, um, does iPad have it now? Nope. Okay. Not well, uh, not the ones that they have yeah, in the course. district, of course. Right, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I do have an old hp laptop in the computer well, lab that's not with those comparable stupid stripe yeah yeah, yeah. No. um but yeah i mean so the cases where i have false negatives are usually um when like if if i instead of taking my finger and 
putting it down onto the fingerprint sensor. If I slide mm. it onto the fingerprint sensor, that messes it up quite often. That's weird, though. You think that would be a, 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 a normal thing for a person to do. Yeah, yeah. And it, I, I do do that often enough where I'm like, oh, I got to remember to... Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also sometimes, like, if, if I've just been washing the dishes right. and I take my phone out of my pocket, it sometimes doesn't really recognize that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's why you need one of those Samsung phones that can you can air swipe over it. Air swipe? Well, they have some kind of thing on the Samsung phones that you can touch the screen without touching it. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah that, w- that they debuted that with the stylus or whatever. Who and knows? Uh, Yeah. yeah. Um, I like. I really like the placement of the fingerprint sensor on the back. Yeah, that's actually fairly good. Because mm-hmm, that's... And it's almost like this Nexus 6 was supposed to have one, too. The dimple. Huh. Yep. Weird. And have, hasn't Motor, Motorola been putting that dimple there since before we had fingerprint sensors on phones? Yes, but that's in. It used to be lower, mm-hmm. and this is a perfect place for it. <laughs> and they just didn't do it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and it's it's right where my finger goes naturally, naturally yep. when I pick up the phone anyway. And so that sensor doesn't have a function if the screen is already unlocked, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't even like buzz buzz or anything so like that's, that. So that's what I would be worried about. But since it doesn't have any problems, that's really good. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely like it better than having a fingerprint sensor way down on the chin of the phone. Right. Because it's, with a phone of this size, and a five-inch phone, mm-hmm. it's not natural for me to have my f- thumb on the chin of the phone. Yeah. Because then I'm, then it's really top-heavy. Mm-hmm. I don't have, my thumb isn't in an ideal place to actually touch things on the screen. You know, you kind of have to be gripping the phone from the side instead of the bottom. With Your a phone, phone of this size. is blinking at me yes. angrily. Uh huh. It has a light. Yeah. What are you talking about? They all have lights. My Nexus Nine Seven Eight Five here does not have it a light. Definitely does. No, it doesn't. All of the okay, so all of the Nexuses, the phones have had lights. You just have to go and turn on the option for it. I don't root my yeah. phone. I don't either. Oh, okay. What? Mm-hmm. Um. And I'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Um, so let's see. What, what, da, 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 da. Yeah. So I, I trained the fingerprint sensor to recognize three different fingers, um, both of my index fingers and my right middle finger. Because sometimes I do pull up my phone out of my pocket with like mm-hmm. my middle finger there instead of my index finger. Right. Um, and I don't hold it with my left hand hardly You didn't ever. register your pinky or something weird. No. No. Maybe I should do my toes. Just, just for just, kicks. Just like, like one arbitrary middle toe. Yeah. <laughs> None of the toes that are actually significant. Yeah. yeah. Or, <laughs> oh man, I'm not. I'm not putting my phone next to my gross feet. Ugh. You could. Um, I am a little bit conflicted about the way that, like the the way that the fingerprint sensor works, mm-hmm. because when if you if you put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, you're not going to see the lock screen at all. Right. It's going to take you past that to whatever app is open at the time, mm-hmm. and. If I want to just glance at my notifications, which of course pop up on the lock screen, right? I I have to like decide when I'm taking my phone out of my pocket. Don't which, touch it. Which one of those two cases yeah. I'm going for? Do I just want to look at the time, or do I want to unlock the phone and go and do something with mm-hmm. it? You know. So I would like it if maybe putting my finger on the fingerprint sensor. Makes it so I don't have to put in the pattern, but it still keeps me at the lock screen right. so I can then just swipe up to yeah. get past. Of course, if that were the case, then I would be complaining right now about the fact that, oh, man, it's another step that I have to do to get into my phone. I put my finger on the sensor and then I have to swipe up. I'm never going to be happy. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I feel like I don't have that issue. I also have a lock screen now because of mm-hmm. reasons. Android Pie. And right. um, I uh, only ever see it like once a month because i'm always here at the host and so and you have trusted, smart lock. trusted places yep. prevent me yep, from yep. ever seeing it so i never care about the lock screen right yeah also i don't get notifications willy-nilly like some people <laughs> i love my notifications <laughs> uh all right so build quality i really like matte plastic yes i love it mm-hmm. i i people who are going on and on about solid metal phones too slippery they mm-hmm. get too cold i don't like metal i'm okay with the cold that's good cold is good we live in minnesota no we live with snapdragons that too cold equals good right yeah i suppose i suppose metal would be better for passive cooling wouldn't it maybe probably well yeah yeah um but yeah so i mean the the matte plastic it's a good kind of middle ground right it Mm -hmm. doesn't feel cheap but it's grippy enough that it's not going to just fly out of your hand 
Um, it's also it the the phone actually has edges, so you mm-hmm. can actually hold it and not. It's not like a bar of soap. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I remember when I had the Nexus Five; it felt just fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't didn't mind it at all. Yeah, yeah, and the and the Nexus Five never, X is fairly similar to that. I never felt like, oh, where's the premium? <laughs> never felt like that. Right. Yeah. Um, camera. Uh, the camera bulge that apparently is all, all phones have these days. Um, actually does feel like it was kind of incorporated into the design of the phone, you know, like with, with other phones where they just have the camera itself that bumps out and then the rest of the body of the phone kind of doesn't acknowledge that that's the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, I, I like this solution where they kind of have it kind of arc its way up into yeah. it with, with a gradual, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and, and that way also it's easy to tell with my finger if I'm about to accidentally cover the aperture of the phone. What's that thing? That's a good question. <laughs> oh my gosh. I actually haven't thought about that before. So we're looking at the back of the phone and we've got the LED flashes right next to the the camera. Actually, that's of note. Uh, it's got dual yeah, LED. that's nice. In, as opposed to the single LED, and then the, what's the original. This? And then we're looking at this other window over yeah, here. It kind of looks like it might be a light sensor kind of thing, but... That it doesn't make sense to put a light sensor on the back of a phone. I, have you, no, I can't see through it, so I don't know. You put the light sensor on the front of a phone usually so that it can change the dimness of your screen. But that's a good question. Okay, then. We'll have to look into that later. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. So as mentioned, yeah, the flash is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually noticed it not while taking pictures, but while using it as a flashlight. Oh, of course. Because I was like, oh, the, the my previous phone had like this obnoxious white light Mm -hmm. and this one is more yellow tone so it feels warmer it feels more natural while i'm shining it around how it i like how yellow makes you feel natural yeah no 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 have you ever been out in the sun yeah that's this no yeah that is a ceiling light ryan yes and this is the sunlight (laughs) those bulbs were advertised as sunlight bulbs actually if you watch my most recent um youtube video the loot crate we yeah, yeah. the U- loot crate double feature we were using a like a daylight thing for lighting in that in that episode which is perfect like it's it's one of those mood lightings you know that's supposed to help you in the winter months yeah and i discovered that it's nice and really bright and i can put it wherever i want in is the it room. yellow mm, no yeah because yellow light is not daylight okay fine okay um yeah as for the the software that goes along with the camera, the camera app kind of takes a moment to open up, as with every Nexus ever. Yep. And now some days it's worse, some days it's not so bad. Y- yeah. And it is the most inconsistent thing. I have no way to know what the cause is. Mm-hmm. I wish I could tell you that I have found a solution. I have hacked the code. I have it. No. It's impossible. No. The thing is, it either opens instantly or it takes three minutes. Yeah. I I had on Christmas morning, my brother was opening up his present mm-hmm. that my sister had wrapped like 30 times you know and in several boxes and, and in the end it, be, it was yeah. a, a, some cash right okay. and we wanted to capture this moment on video so right. i handed my phone to my girlfriend because right. i had the dslr and i was taking actual pictures right and i was like you take this video in 4k mm-hmm. because the camera here supports that and she took the video and by the end when she handed it back she was like i think i hit the stop recording button but it uh, maybe it hasn't stopped and you know the the phone was really hot it was it was slow. Heaven, yeah slow and choppy and, and i managed to get it to stop but the video appeared to be gone when i went into the in the into the photos app there was no video and was I, it like transcoding somewhere I don't in the know, background it's something something happened because i restarted the phone and on on that second restart like the the camera app was working fairly normally uh huh a couple, like a week later, I restarted the phone again, just out of circumstance or whatever. Right. And at that point, so this is two restarts after we took the video. The video shows up in the Photos app, and it looks all normal. And I'm like, what? Where did this come from? You know, it really makes you wonder, deep down, what is going on in that camera what app? What is going on? So, the um, the 5X and the 6P... Um, were the first phones that had the new camera app. Mm-hmm. The one with the uh, revised design where you can just swipe between camera and yep. video mode. Yep. So does, how is that switching time? Does that is that consistent it's, or is that also slow? It seems reasonable. It's, okay. it's not like instantaneous, but mm-hmm. it, it doesn't take forever. Yeah, I feel like the old version took forever and this mm-hmm. one takes less forever. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, being that I have a DSLR, I hardly use the camera on this phone. Yeah, so well, I'm not the best person to ask about whether it's good or I not. I mean, I ha- yeah. I too have a DSLR, but the dog doesn't want to cooperate with or without a camera, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just use the phone. I, I can say for sure, though, that the picture quality on this doesn't suck the way that the original Nexus 5 did. I don't think the Nexus 5 had a bad camera. It, eh. it just wasn't a great camera. Yeah. And... I, I guess my experience was also kind of colored by the fact that there was a giant dark spot in the middle of my lens. Well, yes. That, yeah. Uh, it wasn't the, well, it wasn't the phone's manufacturing fault, probably. Right. No. But yeah, yeah. I, phones get dust in them. That happens. Yep. Yep. So I, I'm glad the camera is good. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I'm really thrilled about is where the headphone jack is on this phone. Really? On the bottom? It's on the bottom. You like that? Love it. Oh. Yes. That's my ideal placement because when I put my phone into my pocket... Which way does it go? It goes upside down, right? The top of the phone is at the bottom of my pocket. Yes. Yeah. So if I have headphones on, I want the headphones to be coming out of the bottom of the phone so that it comes straight out of my pocket. Yep. Um, And so with the Nexus 5, when the headphone jack was on the top, Mm -hmm. I had to put the phone in the opposite way that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes if I was like listening to a podcast and then I took the headphones out and didn't take the phone out of my pocket, you know, I just took the headphones out, wrapped them up, put in my pocket. Later on, I would take the phone out of my pocket and I'd be holding it upside down for a moment and be like, oh, I got to flip it around. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. So I have a solution to that issue. Yeah. And how it doesn't matter. Bluetooth headphones. Right. I'm not rich. Come on now. I like... Mr. $900 TV. Sure, right, but that's a TV. Head- headphones are like, okay, I bought a $10 pair of headphones that are going to last me for six, seven months before they break down and I have to buy new ones. I've, that's fine. I've used my Bluetooth headphones for years. They're fine. Yeah, but I don't want to have to charge those. I charge them once a week. Okay. They're Maybe. Fine. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I... I, I um. The reason I gave up having corded headphones was not because of your issue. I gave up because in winter, the cord would get so stiff, it would almost break. <laughs> yeah, I have the, I mean, I have the cord going through the inside yeah, of my, yeah. my clothes. Mm-hmm. I don't like things touching me. Well, I don't put it under my t-shirt. I don't know. You're just weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, let's talk about USB Type-C. Because that's another one of the big oh, yes. this is, features. This is one of the features. Yeah. Yeah. So th- this is the future, as we all know. I U- do know that. It's it, USB Type-C is coming for most people. It's here for some of us. But only... It's, it's here for some of us, but only in a one or two cable kind of way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, really nice having a reversible connector. I mm-hmm. have to say that. Yep. I do not do not miss having to wonder whether I'm putting it in the correct way the first time. Right. And it's it's going to be really nice Someday. when I when I don't have to worry about which end of the cable even I'm putting it into. That's it, true. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, however, as we live in the, the current, the present... <laughs> and not of, in the future. And not in the future... <laughs> You're going to want, if you buy a Nexus 5X, you're going to want to get a USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable. Right. So that you can use everybody else's charging bricks. Yeah. And you probably want to get at least a couple more cables, too. What do you mean a couple more? Well, I have micro USB cables everywhere. Mm-hmm. I have them upstairs. I have them in the studio. I have them out there in the living room. I can charge any of my phones anywhere. Right. In my house. Fortunately, I don't have to charge it all the time. You know? Oh, I forgot. I, you don't have uh, Nexus 6. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about battery life, actually. <laughs> it's it's good. Uh, it, it lasts most weekdays with over 15% That's good. at the end of the day. Like mm-hmm. from, from 540 in the morning when I get up to like 10 o'clock or whatever when That's I go really to good. bed. Yeah. yeah. That's that's most days uh, when you know I don't interact with the phone between 730 and noon because I'm at you know teaching yeah, and right. at work and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, now that I've started playing Zombies Run again, uh, on my way home for half an hour, you know, the GPS is constantly on for that half hour. That's a, it's, it's a different story now. So I usually plug it in while I'm taking my half hour nap yeah. after I walk home. Right. Uh, and that gets it like up quite a bit mm-hmm. because, uh, with the rapid charging, it goes up by about 1% every minute. That's kind of what I've eyeballed it at. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so with a 25 minute nap, I get 25% more battery. That's good. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that no, that's ca- enough. Yeah. And it makes up for the, for the GPS intrusion. So when you, uh, I say, I don't know, uh, you work at the, uh, Harding, is that what you call that, it? That's the one. So, uh, how's your coverage in the building there? It's pretty good. Uh, my, my classroom is on the edge of the building, mm-hmm. so I'm right next to the windows okay, and it's, good. yeah, it's, it's perfect. When I go into the middle of the building, like at the, the uh the staff lounge or whatever Mm -hmm. it's a a few bars less but it i don't think that there's any places where i just lose okay and so do you keep wi-fi on when you're there i do usually Mm -hmm. uh but occasionally i will have to open up facebook or something and then i'll turn it off for a moment and go on to facebook Mm -hmm. yeah so uh when i taught at central i was often in the computer labs Mm -hmm. so that was in the upstairs floor of the library oh that computer lab okay Uh, And uh, at at that time, T-Mobile didn't have good signal and uh, just what phone? At the top of the building? That's crazy. Yeah, well, it's better now, but back then. And um, I would uh, would leave Wi-Fi on that. It was no problem. But at the U, for some reason, with the Nexus 6 only, Mm -hmm. I've confirmed it's the Nexus 6 related issue. I have no idea, actually. Um, Any Wi-Fi you have in most places will destroy your battery life on Android fascinating yeah because you would assume that it would be the other way around right with the the lte radio having to penetrate through buildings yeah nope easier than wi-fi that's so weird Mm -hmm. that's uh who knows yeah okay so let's talk about that notification light that you were freaking out about oh my gosh it was looking right at me Mm -hmm. well and especially since that particular app uh has red notification lights Wow. so it looks very angry Mm yes um so I really like the placement of the notification light in this one. It's in the middle of the speaker grill at the bottom of the phone. Yes. Now, on the Nexus 5, the notification light was just by itself in the middle of the bottom of the phone. Wait, there was a light on the Nexus 5 too? Yes, there was. Did I use it? N- well, you seemed surprised that any Nexus had a notification light. So it wasn't on by default? I guess not. Okay, that's why I didn't use it. Yeah. So, so... Here's the thing, and and this is something that I discovered with the original Nexus 5, and it's still true, is you go and you you turn it on, Mm -hmm. but you don't have any control over like, okay, if I get a Gmail notification, I want it to be this color. Mm -hmm. If I get a Hangouts notification, I want it to be this color, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just kind of, I I guess the developers of each app decide what the default color is going to be for their app. Um, And for the most part, it's fine. I, I don't really care that much about the color so I just, who, who is red here in this case phoenix phoenix okay that yep. makes sense yep because the phoenix is uh, reddish kind of orange yeah. yeah it would be more sense if it was orange yeah well but whatever rgb um, there there is uh, apps that you can like go and download that will manage what colors it will turn for mm-hmm. in different situations for different apps uh but i didn't care that much right yeah um we should actually we should go and turn that on for your phone after this after the show huh. yeah we should where do you do that i'll show you okay um yip, da, 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 da. yes okay so the screen last thing for hardware the screen this is a a pretty big topic when people are talking about phones they love to talk about the screens they're freaks yeah i i don't care anymore well I, I mean you should care there well, are yeah. issues with screens such as the one I'm looking at right there. But um, if you have a good screen, there are no issues with it, and there's not much to say. I assume when you say that there's an issue with the screen, you mean that that particular unit yes. has yeah. manufacturing issues uh-huh. with the screen. Right, okay. Right. So, But I mean, like, for the most part, you're buying a phone f- f- above a certain price range, you're going to get a good screen, mm-hmm. right? Probably. Um, I I don't think that it was even necessary for us to, at like the four and a half, five inch screen size, to go above 720p. I don't think it was necessary. No, I agree. It was. You so you disagree I, with I, me? I, I don't know what you agree with, but I need 1080. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's a requirement. So how do you feel about 1440? Don't need that. Okay. Don't need that. Good. No. Good. Not, even it. even on this, I don't need that. Right. Yeah. At, at least we agree on that. Because what does this have? Like 500 PPI or something absurd? Some, some ridiculous. Yeah. How about that Sony camera with a 4K? Unacceptable. I mean, camera. Uh, Sony phone. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just not necessary. Yeah. No. I'm I'm glad that they kind of stopped at 1080p for now for now yeah i know i i am a little bit kind of disappointed that it doesn't it's not an amoled display because it has like that ambient display that Mm -hmm. that comes up with a black and white 
version of the lock screen. Right. And that would be nice to have just as an AMOLED display. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few apps that I have dark themes for. Right. And so it's like, okay, it would be pure black, wouldn't be taking up any battery life at all for most of the pixels on the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, But, oh well. You know... Uh, they they said there was a lot of ghosting issues when the Nexus Six came out because of the AMOLED display. Oh, really? I've never seen any ghosting in either of my f- Nexus Six phones. Hmm. I've had other issues with the screen though, such as AMOLED apparently might be more prone to this. I don't know, but I have darker bands in some places on both screens. Okay. Hmm. And um, you don't notice it when it's you're just on a thing, but as soon as you just start scrolling. You'll notice the subtle band not moving. Because it's not moving, right. And it, you're freaking out. So you don't have these issues. Usually that kind of issue is, oh, there's a smudge on my screen and I have, you know, you can't tell until you're scrolling. And yeah. But it's worse. I can't. Change. Right. It's, exactly. You can't just wipe it off. So you don't have any hardware screen issues? No, not that you, I know of. You're but good. I'm not as observant as you, apparently. Uh-huh. I have discovered that when I'm looking at that phone screen, through my cloudy day sunglasses, mm-hmm. right, which are kind of rose tinted, right, it looks like a, a super saturated Samsung display. Oh, that's okay. Though. You know, yeah, nothing. To, that's not bad. So I, I can get that experience without having to have an AMOLED display. <laughs> now you just need to have all the water particle effects and <laughs> plop, and plop, just like the Samsung phones. All right. So speaking of ambient display, um, that's that's one of the pieces of of software that is not exactly stock android Mm -hmm. right so wait it isn't no so okay so let's start off the software section saying we had a whole episode about android 6.0 marshmallow yep and if you want to hear all of our thoughts on that you should go and listen to that episode that's at the nexus.tv slash so one yay that was the inaugural episode of second opinion and uh so yeah so part of the appeal of a nexus phone is that you get stock android straight from google you're always going to have the most up-to-date version of android usually before anybody else gets it. usually right? there was like one time when somehow the moto x was updated to like yeah. android 5 before anybody else or something like that so sad it was very strange um but yeah so so the ambient display is actually one feature that like the nexus 5 doesn't have mm-hmm. um even though it is updated to the exact same version of Android as the Nexus 5X. Yeah. Uh, but, I don't know, the sensors or something are, you know, more efficient in the 5X, and so yeah. they didn't want to have the that sensor always on in the mm-hmm. Nexus 5 or something, well, something like so that. Well, so there's two reasons. The sensor thing is one of those okay. reasons. Uh, the, uh, the, the 808 in this can handle, um, you know, on some sub-processor deal, the accelerometer or whatever it uses to mm-hmm. detect motion. In addition, the screen also, the 5 screen is awful and it, would drain yeah. the power into zero very fast, whereas the 5X screen is not as awful Yeah, and that, won't do that. That's the other thing about the screen of the 5X is it's not bright as hell. Maybe that's but, bad. Maybe that's good. I don't well, know. okay. So the Nexus 5 was good for like seeing things in daylight, right? Mm-hmm. But if I took out my phone while I was trying to sleep and don't turned on the screen... To like check something, I'm going blind. Nexus 5X is much more reasonable. Its its dimmest um, setting is. Do you use the adaptive brightness? Yes. Okay. Yep. 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 And you know you use the adaptive brightness on the Nexus 5 as well. And even when you manually drag that thing all the way down, yeah. it's still it's gonna burn your retinas out. Yeah, I know how that is. We uh, should compare brightness later. Sure. Um, so yeah, so the ambient display is is something that kind of shows a black and white view of the time and the notifications that appear on your lock screen. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't show you like the background or any of the other little icons that are on there. You know, so like the the camera icon, right. the voice icon, the lock icon down at the bottom, and and you know that's good because it, it's it's distinct from the from the uh from the lock screen itself right yeah so it's similar to but not exactly the same thing i like it a lot it's one of the i really wanted a moto x when it came out with that Mm -hmm. and that's probably the best feature from the moto series yeah and that and i do wish that we had the gestures like open up the camera right now twist twist you know the gesture that uh, the new camera app brings with it, the double power D- button. Yep, that's fine. I don't need any twister. Yeah, but it doesn't feel as like, cool. Double twist, twist just makes me want to drop the phone and hit somebody with it. Yeah, that's true. So I'm okay with that. I think actually the chop chop is probably more of a because oh, yeah. it's like a throwing motion. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, 
Now, the the ambient display, it doesn't do a very good job of sensing when I am, like, picking up the phone to see the time Mm -hmm. versus just kind of being jiggle around in general. Yeah. And, of course, when I try to demonstrate by jiggling it around, it doesn't respond. Me too. I just just went through the motions. And it also um, activates the ambient display whenever a notification comes in, kind of like what iOS has done for, like, forever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I like that. Um, I do... I, I did think it rather strange when I first saw an iOS device doing that because I'm like, you're turning on the entire display, taking up that battery life for that amount of time. It's fine. Just to tell somebody that they're having a notification. And I was coming at it from the perspective of, I'm used to just having this notification light that turns on. And it's this tiny LED that doesn't take any battery at all. Mm-hmm. Apparently, even Ryan wasn't aware of the notification light being on a Nexus phone. So... I just uh, no, I don't do that. Yeah, um, and and being that it's like a, a black and white view of the thing, I really really like it. Yeah, it's, I like it too. It, it's, it looks it, great. It feels like it's it's kind of a peek into it, but mm-hmm. it's not like a full. So even the widget here for my audible player, mm-hmm. it has a little black and white widget. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. It, it works. And it takes yeah, it takes anything that's going to be in the my favorite thing tray. with the ambient display is when I have uh, Beyond Pod up. Mm-hmm. And it's little widget. You can see our album arts in yeah. black and white. That's yeah, yeah, delightful. Mm-hmm. So you listen to our your own podcast of quite often. I do. Oh, you're so narcissistic. Audio quality specialist. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about always listening for OK Google. That's you enough. mean never listening, right? Yeah, God. <laughs> OK Google. Yeah, none of them. OK Google. Yeah, none of them. Nope. Even though, so I literally retrained the voice model this afternoon. <laughs> And it's still, get, ugh. I did have one time where it used I noticed, to work. yeah, I noticed that the like the Google setting in the app mm-hmm. had been turned off somehow hmm. without me going and doing it. So I had to go and turn turn that on again. Where is that setting? But it's uh, if you go into settings, you go to yep. Google, okay. and then you go to now and search, and then you go to voice voice activation. And you can tell by the fact that I'm able to rattle that off off the top of my head that I have to do that all the time. But yeah, I I think it's there's something to do with like Doze. Yeah, probably. Maybe, yeah. yeah. That, that But I thought uh doesn't it use Google Play services as I have, the no, idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um though yeah, that might not be true because even when I take out the phone and unlock it and it's it's now on, the screen's on, so it's definitely using, you know, processor power and everything and I say okay Google. Nothing. It doesn't do a a darn thing. Oh. <laughs> and so you you remember back in the days when we would do these same podcasts and we would say, okay, Google, accidentally, and then all eight phones would go off at And once. even your desktop. And my desktop, yep. which was a travesty, I might add. It doesn't do it at all anymore. No. And, and I don't know what happened. And uh, it can't be just Doze. No, you're right. Because I'm using the phone and it never does it. And I can scream uh, at the phone all day long and it won't do it. Yeah. Uh, I've also noticed, even when using the little button to cue this thing up, sometimes it will not hear me at all. <sighs> or it'll, like, take forever to actually get to the point where it is listening. Yeah. Like, it'll mm-hmm. stutter and, yep. yeah. There's something if, wrong. I wonder if it's, um, the camera app is evolving. I hope not. <laughs> there was that There was that awful camera bug on the Nexus 5 where... Do it, I remember this? I, I remember this very distinctly because... If so, if the camera was on for too long at mm-hmm. one time, then the camera would become unresponsive. Oh, okay. And it, whenever you tried to open up the camera app, it would crash. Great. And that was a real problem for me because at the time I was experimenting with the smart lock features, oh. and one of the smart lock features was facial recognition. Uh-huh. So the camera was literally always on. So like what? It was a, like super big memory leak, and then just I have no idea what the problem was, but like. I couldn't even turn on the flashlight on my phone because the camera was unresponsive and the flashlight goes through the camera. Not anymore, but yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What? Not anymore. What do they, you mean? They have a new API for that now. Oh, really? Okay. So it's not just a different button placement, but it is literally the API is different? Yeah. Apparently they have a new flashlight API. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah. The one thing they did right. They need to fix OK Google. For real. That's, that's one of the things that I could, had always loved being able mm-hmm. to feel better than other people about okay is, google is your phone isn't listening to you for your voice all the time mine is haha ha. but now they're not now they're not Ugh. 
Let's go into performance. Oh, I love this topic. Yeah. You're... So let's let's begin here. Snapdragon from Qualcomm. This is coming with an 808. Yep. That means it's not an A10, which means when Ian holds it, his hand hasn't turned into lava yet. Yep. And in theory, it's much, much better than the 800 that was in the Nexus 5. I don't know 5. if I would say much, much, much. It's, well... Just it... one much, maybe. I Okay, yeah. So, it's not. Not, not it's much? It's not, no. I, I didn't realize it until I was writing up this review, but really the performance is only marginally better than the Nexus 5. And why do you think that is? I think, well, you're going to say that it's because Qualcomm has to get off of their butts and actually develop new things. Okay, what's your reasoning? I'm thinking that it actually has a lot to do with the fact that it has the exact same amount of memory. Oh, yeah. Could because be. I, I looked at the memory section of the settings today, mm -hmm. and it's using, like, I, I actually, I think I opened this up right when I woke up. Mm -hmm. So the phone was theoretically in doze mode because it was sitting on my dresser, right. charging that whole time. Mm -hmm. 1.4 gigabytes on average were used over the last three hours. So when it was it, doing nothing. It has, yeah, exactly. It has two gigabytes of memory total. Mm -hmm. 1.8 gigabytes usable. Right. That's not much room for for more Anything. stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, it, it has trouble with, like, the same types of situations as the Nexus 5 did. So whenever I'm doing several things at once, I'm using Link Bubble. By the way, I'm thinking about stopping using Link Bubble and see if it works better. Um, the keyboard stutters sometimes, you know, uh, more often than... <laughs> than I would really like it to. <laughs> that that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Same types of problems. Same. Yeah. Memory. Situations. Um. Memory is a big f factor. I don't know what kind of memory this phone uses. Presumably, mm. the DDR3 variant, but I don't know Probably. for sure. Um. I guess I would wonder. I don't know of any other phone that has a better processor, but not more memory. Yeah. Who 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 has an eight ten? but has also two gigs of memory. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. That would be a strange it, lopsided configuration. But if they had that, then you would be able to tell better mm -hmm. if it was a memory thing or a processor thing. It's mm -hmm. very well possible that it's both. Yeah. Yeah. And and here's the thing. like, It would be fine if I didn't have to spend another $400 on this new phone, mm -hmm. right? It's I'm a little conflicted because, you know, at, at, on one hand... The Nexus 5 worked just fine for me most of the time. Mm -hmm. But if since I'm buying a new phone two years later and it it is costing a little bit more than the phone the other phone did at the time, mm -hmm. you would think that it would not only be better just because time has passed and a four hundred dollar phone now is going to be better than a two four hundred dollar right. phone two years ago, but I'm spending a little bit more money on it than I did two years ago. So it should be noticeably better. Right, I I guess it just goes to show that the Nexus Four and Five were aberrations. Yeah, they were too cheap, and the, yeah, and too good. Yeah, Man. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the Nexus Five was the beginning of that trend of oh, we can actually make mid-range priced phones. phones for that are like flagship phones. And then that was also the beginning of the end, because here we are now, where they're all expensive and not that good. Yeah, and yeah. whose fault is that? Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Now, I will say that my uh, Nexus 6 here uh, has 3 gigs of memory. Mm -hmm. My uh, mom's phone is the Zenfone 2. That uses or that has 4 gigs of memory, <sighs> which is uh, just absurd. Mm -hmm. It has no problem. It never even gets past 2.5. Wow. It's just, woo, yeah, cool. Have fun with that. So that's really good. On the other hand, the processor in that phone is also fairly decent. It's it's probably comparable to like an 805 or in like a lower 8, not an 808 okay. or an 810, but it's good enough for, you know, normal people use. I don't think the 800 Snapdragon is bad by any stretch. It's in fact way better than a 400 mm -hmm. and and much better than an S4 Pro. Right. So, and the S4 Pro is like a 600. Okay. So I, I think uh, I remember saying at the time that the 800 is a good baseline. Mm -hmm. Nobody should have performance less than that. Right. And it is sad to see. I agree that after two years, we don't have way better performance. Right. Mm -hmm. But at least at least we aren't seeing anybody going below that that threshold for the most part, unless you go down to like a two hundred dollar. What does the Moto G have? Four hundred. Yeah. 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 But and, and so that's also one of those problems. 
where has where are the new 400s that are better than the original 400 three years later they're nowhere well call come right but i mean i i you would have to have like the 405 or the 410 or something like that you yeah know? 410 but that's not better it's just that has better lte or something in it that, sure it's not better performing sure yeah okay uh, i could argue about this all day yeah. yeah i don't i don't understand the numbering system apparently yeah that's okay um, so 32 gigabytes of storage is, you know, it's still fine, yeah. but it's not, I, I can't just install all of the games that I want to on the phone. Um, you know, if every once in a while, if I'm taking a bunch of pictures on it, you know, it's going to be a problem eventually. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 32 gigabytes is, is kind of still my baseline amount that somebody should have. Mm-hmm. And then 64 would be great, but I'm I can't okay with- imagine somebody getting 16. Yeah, no. I mean, my dad has the 16 gigabyte Moto G, but we put the expandable. It's still not good enough. What do you mean? Well, so when can he install apps on the SD card? Yes, because Android 6.0 has, and it's okay the, with that. It 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 treats the expanded storage as one lump, and it's still fast enough. I think so. I don't know. Okay. I haven't interacted with his phone since I did that. Oh, okay. And he hasn't complained to me about it. Well, people who don't know what to complain about don't complain about That's the things true. they should complain we about. We should get him in here and have a, hey, a, a there review you go. of the Moto G. Wow, what a real show that'll be. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> so, okay, so Nexus Protect. Uh, I'm really glad that it exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I bought this phone, I bought it in mid-December when they were having that promotion of $50 off yeah. or whatever of it. And I was like, okay, well, with the $50 off, I can basically get Nexus Protect, and it'll be almost the exact same price as the phone would have been normally. Right. So I, I went for it. I, I did it. Um, and, and part of my reasoning also was the fact that if I had had Nexus Protect on the Nexus 5, I wouldn't have had to get a new phone. Right. I would have just called them up and been like, hey, the power button. It is acting up. It hasn't been quite two years yet. Yeah. Give me a new one fix it and they'll be like fine yeah exactly uh now since i haven't broken my phone yet it's only been one month hopefully i don't know how smooth the system is yet so i can't review that you know everybody says that google sports really good yeah but this is an outside company that uh, that my contract is hopefully google will tell them if you're not good we'll yell at you yeah exactly Um, turn off your search engine now i can tell you that having nexus protect has given me the confidence to forget about getting a screen protector for this phone. Yeah, you're messed up. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know already that I would have been going caseless whether I had Nexus Protect or not. Right. But normally I would have a, a, a screen protector on it. And I literally just forgot to think about that for three weeks after I had the phone. I was like, oh, yeah, I should go and look at those. And then I was specifically looking for one from Anchor because I liked the texture yeah. of their other one for mm-hmm. the Nexus 5. They don't make one for the 5X. Of course not. <sighs> so then I forgot about it. I, would, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't live without a screen protector personally, but... Uh, I noticed I, that you've got one that has like this weird white kind of corner. That's because that's the one that pro- came with your phone. You are so weird. I, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Also, a comet hit my phone right there. Comet. A comet. Yeah, a comet. It, it, it punctured... The, uh, the screen, screen protector? protector, and you can see like a little bubble space right under it. Hmm. So presumably that's what a comet is. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's that ninth planet. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. So yeah, overall Nexus 5X, it kind of feels like I just have the same phone, but in a slightly different body. Does it feel like an X body? I don't know what that means. Was, well, that, was uh, that an Xbox joke? No, or? if a five to a five X, it's just a very small upgrade. Sure, okay, upgrade. yeah, it it is. Um, and I would have liked to have had more of a difference. You know, like mm-hmm. the the performance issues that I was seeing two years ago, not seeing those anymore. Um, but I mean, overall, so um, it's how, okay. how much does this cost here? Like normally. Oh, uh, that's a, um, I should have looked that up before the show. We should have gotten links to the store page for this thing before the show, fine, shouldn't we? It's Whatever. Fine. So Nexus 5X from the Google themselves, base model is 349 and the real model and the 32 gigabyte model is 399 and with Protect it is 468. It's another $70, right? 468 yeah. total. Right. And that's without tax. Yeah. Don't live in St. Paul. By the way, tax, oh my goodness, that adds a lot. So just order from somewhere else. Do not order from St. Paul. 
Are you actually going to get charged no St. Paul taxes? I, I think you just get charged Minnesota taxes. I just charge all my taxes. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, how, would, is, that, is, is $500 okay for this phone? Is it worth it? Would it be better just to go and get a previous generation S4 or S5 or, you know, some other flagship, but just from last year? Uh, it, well, if you're okay yeah, giving might... up that, that googly updatedness. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. If you're even considering the Nexus 5X, it is probably because you want that updated Android experience, the pure Andro- stock Android mm-hmm. Um, and if you're looking at the 5X or the 5- S6P in particular, you're looking for that fingerprint sensor and the USB Type-C. Are you? Yes, because that that is what like differentiates them from all of the other Nexuses and Motorola phones that are out right. there, right? Which are the other the other two like in the category of pure Android things. Mm-hmm. That's what you're looking at, right? right. Is Motorola, OnePlus, mm-hmm. Nexus, right? So. Out of out of that group, you might be better off getting like last year's Moto X. Hmm. Interesting. You might be better off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people have said. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because the, the, the that Moto X, I don't you know because there's so many Moto Xs now. I have no idea what it's called. Like the yeah. style or something. That well, that's that's this year's right. It's the pure edition or the style or what, depending on whether you're in the U.S. or well, that's abroad. Technically, last year because it's 2016. Okay, you're right. Okay, the current model. <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking about in relation to when this phone, I'm the five X, was was released. Okay, fine. But yeah, so so I don't think that the fingerprint sensor is is a necessary thing I don't for think so a phone. Um, USB Type C. It's up to you to decide whether you want to live in that future yet or not. And if you already have a bazillion cables in micro USB, you might as well just keep living with it for a while. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the they will only get cheaper on the USB C side. Yeah. So I'll tell you a story about uh, my second Nexus Six here. Okay. The reason I got this is because it was Black Friday and it was two hundred dollars. Wow. So wow. why wouldn't I just get one or Where, a couple? Where'd you get it from? Amazon. Huh. I'm really good at this. Nice. Walked right up at three in the morning. Walked mm. right out. Walked. <laughs> of the studio, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's uh. So, it's, a fine, it's a fine phone. Yeah, I mean, it's it looks nice. It feels light. But here's the thing. Yeah, it's it's really but hard it, to get excited about. Yeah, it's a good enough. But it's yeah. It's I a, mean, it's it's hard for me to get excited about phones in general anymore. Do you know why? Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I, and I know it's a joke now, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't believe you until I had a new phone, and I was like, it has the same performance. And it's not like my 805 is worse or better. It's more of the same again. And it's not like the A10 is better. Well, no, it's actually worse. No, no, never mind. (laughs) And it's not like the A20 is super way better. It's better, 40% better than the A10. Mm -hmm. But is it better enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, by the time the A20 comes out later this year, the A30 will be two months away from CES MWC. So then we'll have missed yet another good That's chip. just the nature of the cycle, right? Is as soon as one hits the actual market where we can get phones that have it, we already ha- are hearing about the next one, and we're hearing about a phone that is going That's to be That's only in. true because the Nexus dis- program people decided to release in fall instead of spring like everybody else. Right. It's their fault. Yeah. Blaming it solely on them. It, but it also depends on... Oh, wait. In, in my case, it, it also depends on when my phone breaks down and I have to buy a new one. Yeah, right? I, my phone breaks down precisely on the day a new phone comes out. <laughs> that's, that's a kind of an interesting coincidence there, Ryan. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So that's the Nexus 5X. I like it. I, I do too. I'm I'm hoping to have a nice long run with this one and not have to buy uh, a new phone for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully... Maybe stopping using Link Bubble will solve a lot of the performance issues that Let I've been noticing. Let me tell you noticing. a secret. It will. Yeah, it's it seems like it seemed like it was the world when I when I got it. It like, it is the world. And then, but then when you realize that it's like okay, maybe it's too ambitious. Maybe it's too good to be true. No, but it's not. It's just poorly made. Okay. Yeah. And now and now that most apps have the Chrome, the Chrome Web View or whatever yeah. they call it built in Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to do that switching to to chrome itself right that might mean that 
the issue that Link Bubble solved is no longer really an issue. I, I use the other one. What's the other Link Bubble thing? Flinks. Yeah, I use that still. Works great. Okay. Use that. Try that instead. I did, and I didn't think that it was much Way better. different. Okay. If you say so. Hmm. So where can we find you on the internet? I am Ian R. Buck, and you can find me at Ian R. Buck on Twitter, on Flickr, on Patreon. What? <gasps> Patreon? Hey, that's new. I did. I finally launched uh, my Patreon. It took, it took a while. I had to psych myself up to record a video for it. And yeah, write like up eight a, clips of yeah, different activities. Exactly. I thought I thought it was pretty cute. I liked it. And uh, write up a bunch of explanations for all the different projects I, that I, I have going the, on. I um, love the last entry there. Like, if you're my mom, give me a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. My mom's never going to give me I a dollar. <laughs> she doesn't care about... The, she Any doesn't care about my podcast or my blog. So sad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of, it almost feels weird promoting my Patreon here because this is a two person, multiple person effort, right? Is it? And people contributing to my Patreon, you, Ryan, are not going to see any of that money because I'm greedy. I'm not giving you I fully support your greed. <laughs> That's how it should be. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you feel like, uh, supporting me in, in creating these things that I create, whether it be the podcast or the blogs or the photo photography or whatever photographs but photo- photo- photography uh yeah go and go and check out my patreon yeah watch this video because it's great yeah yeah well and you can find me just about everywhere but especially on the twitter at ryan Mar- and of course on the google plus it's where i post cats playing with balls because the dog never goes in front of the camera well and the dog doesn't know how to play fetch anymore and the cat does so that's, that's what funny. i have to record all right yeah i'll well, have a good one